Hello everybody out here, Carl Malone I'm with my best buddy here, OG Malone. Follow him. He's my man. And if you don't follow him, then I don't know what I think about you. OG Malone. Yeah yeah. OG Malone, that mailman, that go get I be OG Malone, that flex hard, that Hall of Fame. I be OG Malone, that underdog but game changer. I be OG Malone, that MVP, that Lone Ranger. I'm OG Malone, oh OG Malone. I said I'm OG Malone, oh OG Malone. I said I'm OG Malone, oh OG Malone. I said I'm OG Malone, oh OG Malone. I be OG Malone. What's good, ladies and gents? OG Malone, Joey Braxton right here. We're having our first Cigar Talks, episode one. We got five questions for y'all. We're breaking down into five different segments, so let's get it. So what inspired me to write OG Malone? Oh man, uh, a lot of it was just the whole concept of it. So what really motivated me was um, I was in Utah it was fall 2015. Um, that's when I wrote the song. The concept was way before that. The concept happened when I first moved to Utah, May 2014. So that whole summer, that whole year I was in Utah, my first time living there. Uh, I love the jazz, I love the drip, the colors, all that stuff. And I did a lot of thrifting in Utah. Um, that was my main job was thrifting. So. I was like, damn, man, I'm in Utah. I'm from the South. I'm in Utah. Carl Malone's from the South. He played in Utah. So I was just like, damn, and I was finding all this old school Utah jazz stuff in the thrifts. So I just did this whole thing like OG Malone mental first. So it was the mentality OG Malone before I wrote the song. What made me write the song was a lot of experiences and one of the experiences was uh, going on tour with Wiz Khalifa. So it was around Sundance 2015. We had an opportunity to um, perform, to go on tour with Wiz Khalifa. And, uh, you know, I just felt like, you know, after that whole event and, um, and what transpired after the event, you know, I got back home. And um, basically what happened was, um, long story short was, Supposed to open up for Wiz Khalifa. It was Wiz, it was McConan, it was uh, Fat Man Key, and it was uh, me and my uh, partner at that time, my rap partner at the time, Rap Game Ryan. And we were on tour, and everything was was lit. We were doing it in Orem at a Utah Valley University, and um, some events happened where there were um, some people in our party who decided to sneak into Wiz Khalifa's dressing room. And his manager did not like that and he shut that shit down. Like, that was the first time. They did it again, again that night, and they threw me and my partner under the bus. Oh, Joey Braxton said it's okay. And Wiz didn't pull the plug on the event, it was his management. Pulled the plug on the event, and you know I I didn't even care about anything. I was like I was so pissed. I didn't know what I was gonna do, how I was gonna take this anger, and I decided to use this anger, take it out on a song. Later that night, you know we were just chilling there. Um, I had my I sat in the bathroom that night. I had my iPhone out, I had the notepad, and I just wrote the song, you know. I be OG Malone, that mailman, that go-getter, that OG Malone, that flex hard, that Hall of Famer. Because in my head, I just felt like so disrespected from that event that we had people, we sold hundreds of tickets to this event. People were coming out to see us. And I just felt that one instance just, I felt so disrespected from it. And I was like, you know, I wanna, I wanna gain my respect. I'm an underdog, I'm a go-getter. And I'm gonna go get this dream, I'm gonna go get what I want. So that experience inspired me to really write OG Malone. Um, that's how it was written. 
just that experience it's how I felt um, the mood the zone I felt really I felt really angry and I wanted to use the music as an outlet and use that outlet to channel me in the right direction so that's one of the reasons why I wrote Ochi Malone. Question number two. Um, the meaning behind a song, OG Malone, is way different than why it was written. So, living in Utah, I appreciated so many things I never got a chance to experience growing up. Like shooting guns, hunting, hiking, um, camping, uh, you know, seeing mountains, um, going on boats, boating, all these things. And, you know, um, one element of OG Malone was the aspect that, uh, you know, Carl Malone, um, his game on the court was, you know, he was MVP, he was a Hall of Famer. He had that tenacity, that mentality, like, yo, I'm going to get the job done. The mailman always delivers, even on Sunday. He had that mindset, and it came with this game. Played, you know, um, over 19 years in the league, an all-star level his whole career. You know, pedal to the metal, all gas, no brakes. And I just respected that element of, you know, that mindset that, you know, small town dude, the vibe, super chill, laid back, but got the work done, you know, put buckets against a lot of Hall of Famers in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. So I respected that whole game from the basketball standpoint. The stuff outside of basketball was the personality of what Carl Malone embodied. You know, the aspect that, you know, uh, you know, he's an underdog, you know, the aspect that he's an entrepreneur, like he owns so many businesses, him and his family, you know, from from the uh, the coffee shops and the, the car dealerships and the cigar shop and, you know, all this other um, real estate and property throughout the nation. And I was like, damn, I respect that, you know, because I respect like being a go getter in so many different ways like you can't put me in a category I'm not just a basketball player I'm not just a rapper I'm not just a thrifter I'm so many things and OG Malone that's just one aspect of it like Carl Malone he had that swag he had that drip or he was himself I'm just Carl I'm just Joey and you know he loved hunting I remember as a kid you know seeing the uh, the magazines and he was in ads NRA you know on Harley Davidson's you know cowboy hat um, hunting you know uh, with scopes and all this shit in Alaska all throughout the nation and I thought that was dope you know growing up in South Florida that shit I only saw on TV so to see someone of color um, do these things and be himself do these things that people put a lot of colorism to it I'm like, yo, that shit is so dope because it's bigger than color. It's bigger than color. And that whole situation impacted my whole mindset. Like living in Utah, like where I grew up in Florida, like the only people I knew that went to Denver, that went to Montana, that went to Utah were people that had money to go on trips. To us, it was like, oh yeah, we'd love to get rich one day and maybe see Yellowstone National Park, maybe see Park City, maybe see Moab and all this stuff. It wasn't a reality until I lived there. And I was like, oh damn, this shit is really real. So that aspect of OG Malone was just his whole swag, his personality, like, this is me. I'm, I'm gonna wear my Wrangler jeans. I'm gonna wear my cowboy hat. I'm gonna drive my trucks, my, um, my, my uh, semi trucks I thought that was dope for his individuality so OG Malone's all about your individuality being that mailman being that go-getter whatever it is that you're chasing in life that you're trying to achieve in life that's what inspired me I wanted to be that I wanted to start the song as everybody want to be Jordan everybody want to be Kobe but I just want to be Mr. OG OG Carl Malone because I grew up supporting the underdogs. You know, I was a fan of Jordan. I was a fan of Kobe, but I didn't care about that. My my top five all-time players don't have NBA championships, but they're all Hall of Famers. They played in small market teams, and I respect that grind because 
it's what you put in. You're not doing it for the clout. You're not doing it for the fame. You're doing it for that that city. You're putting that city, that state, that town on the map. So that's another element of OG Malone. Why I wrote it. And the song means a lot to me because it just like influenced my whole adulthood, I would say. Like from 25 years and beyond, it influenced my, I had a paradigm shift in life. So like my dating, all these things, like, you know, for example, like I just fell in love with the mountain, mountain west with the Rocky Mountains, you know, being rugged, growing out the beard, you know, uh, you know, with the drip, with the Rocky Mountain drip, just being you, and that was O.J. Malone's song inspired, and he, to my dating practices, like, you know, I met the love of my life in the Rocky Mountains. Where's she from? Montana. Where would I meet her? Boise, Idaho, Treasure Valley. And, you know, where Carl Malone meet his wife? You know, she was, she was in Boise, flexed up, you know? She was a uh, Miss Idaho uh, super pageant, beauty pageant, so, it's just the aspect that like, there's so many there's so many beautiful things in the Rocky Mountains and OG Malone song was to show that that this region needs to be taken seriously and I, I did even though I had a lot of time living in Atlanta going to school in Atlanta uh, growing up in South Florida I lived in Utah for um, a little over a year when I wrote OG Malone but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be like John Denver and write songs about what I'm currently doing and where I'm currently at and where I'm curr currently at mentally. So that's what inspired OG Malone, just the whole drip, uh, the personification of Carl Malone as an athlete, but as a businessman, as a family man on and off the court and uh, as an individual. So that's the elements why I wrote OG Malone. What kind of opportunities did the song OG Malone do for me? It changed my life. <laughs> changed my life, I'll tell you that. It wasn't planned. It was not planned. I did the song out of love, did a song out of passion. And, you know, it started with um, Carl Malone's son, KJ. Shout out to you, KJ. Um, you know, he um, sent the song to his mom. Found out about it on the internet. Send it to his mom and uh, Katie. Shout out to Katie. Shout out to all the car, uh, all the Malones, all the children that during that time, like they pushed the song, tweeted the song, Instagram the song, and the buzz just built from that. And then, um, you know, Kay, Carl Malone's wife, she reached out to me. You know, showing hella love, much love to you, Kay. Like, you know, you changed my life in so many ways. That phone call, um. You know, when you call and Carl's on the other line, that just, that made so much, that meant so much to me because it wasn't even my intentions. Um, my intention was just to do it for me, do it out of the passion. I didn't know that that phone call, that Carl was going to find out about it, the family was going to find out about that. So many people in Utah were just going to catch on the wave and that just put me on a whole different platform. Um, and at that time, I wasn't even ready for that. Everything was just going 2,800 miles an hour, and I was just going 60 miles mentally. I was like, yo, this is too much. So the Malones and the Malone family, y'all really, really helped me a lot. And uh, a lot of the opportunities, I went on my first my first tour um, as a solo artist. You know, I went, seen probably like 30 plus different cities in, you know, in, a, in a year. And, um, you know, um, sat down with record labels, uh, got management deals, um, met with Interscope, uh, met with, with Columbia Records, met with Capitol Records and all these other labels and just seen what it did and just, it got people's attention. Like, the one thing that really showed me that, damn, like, an opportunity that really, like, opened my eyes was when I went to L.A. I was there for doing a press run. Met with some labels, but I was on a I had an interview with um B Real TV. Um, uh, they had a segment called uh, Tits and Tacos. You know, like two of the ladies on there. One was DJ, one was a host, and they would have tacos during the interviews. So they they debuted my song, and it was just one of those things. I was like, damn, I'm in LA right now. Like I'm in LA right now for this music. I'm in LA right now wearing a Utah Jazz hat, a Utah Jazz jacket. 
talking about OG Malone and running with my youths. That whole, all the singles I dropped that fall, I was in LA that December talking about. And then it started going like I was going on tour, like, you know, um, local shows, you know, and then like it got bigger, like, you know, you know, did an event with Nipsey Hustle, RP Nipsey Hustle in Atlanta. Um, you know, went on a Motor City tour with Sai, The Prince, Good Music. Uh, and Two Chains, you know Adrian Marcel, uh, I mean all these huge like festivals, you know, throughout the nation. So that right there just meant so much. And I was like, damn, yo, you can really put your mindset into it, and you're, and you're authentic. If you are authentic to yourself, the right people are gonna catch on, and that whole movement, the right people were catching on. And during that time, I didn't have no management, you know, or I didn't have the right management. I didn't have a publicist, so I was getting all these opportunities on my own, and it was me being authentic to myself with the drip, uh, with the swag, with the music, but with my whole vintage store, Art Vault Collection, like doing that during that whole time, like people throughout the nation were buying for me to buy that Utah Jazz drip, that Utah drip, that Rocky Mountain drip, so I saw that it was bigger than me. The song was just a song, but the movement was worldwide, people like people in Australia that were like, you know, big NBA bloggers and journalists hitting me up, playing OG Malone in the background of their song while they're interviewing Dante Exum and Joe Ingles. So I was like, damn, like, you know, the love was just everywhere. So the opportunities that came from OG Malone um, was just seeing, seeing the nation and seeing different aspects of life. Like I would say one of the best fruits of it was you know, was um, was seeing California, seeing the state I was born, uh, you know, seeing um, the West Coast, seeing the Mountain West, you know, seeing all these great things, performing at my undergrad during their Spring Fest, uh, you know, with um, with, with just so many great talent, and meeting some of my like, you know, meeting so many great people, like you know, have opportunity to meet, you know, Dave East, one of my favorite artists. You know, um, up and coming or um, new age artist. So you know, being able to go on tour and meet him while I'm on tour, like and shit like that, it just it just the, the priceless moments of meeting people were just so um, yeah, I can't put a price to it. You know, but one of the best things was getting my mind my mind right. You know, like you know when uh, seeing places like Boise and Idaho and places in the mountain west i started to find a passion I'm like, okay cool I, I like boise i like the vibes you know so i started to appreciate the rocky mountain vibes and you know fast forward you know two years after that song i met love of my life where would i meet her boise idaho it's crazy right but that right there is a priceless opportunity man linking up with the malones did not happen overnight, I'll tell you that. Um, it took time cultivating the relationship. Like uh, September 2015, you know, I dropped the song OG Malone, uh, Labor Day weekend, September 1st. I got the phone call maybe like a couple days later, you know, from K Malone and Carl and um, it was lit and you know we've always kept in touch you know um, Carl would you know Kay would send me you know uh, um, family cards in the mail for the holidays and you know birthday videos from Carl Malone smoking his cigars in Dominican Republic flexed up you know like I felt included and it meant a lot to me because I wasn't even expecting that you know it wasn't even a goal so linking up with them like you know there was a lot of times we were trying to schedule linking up between 2015 and 2019, like during Sundance, before or after, whenever I was in Utah or, or when they were in Louisiana. It just didn't happen, you know, just because of our conflicting schedules. And then, but always showed love, you know, they always showed love. Um, and I always showed love back and it's just building relationships and cultivating them. I knew in time I wanted to meet Carl and meet Kay and just appreciate the moment and the time and, and their 
um, their presence because, you know, I just appreciate who they are and what they represent as a couple, as a family, as business women and men. I just, I just rock with it. So, you know, and um, I knew that I wanted to meet them when I was mentally ready to meet them. And I knew I needed to have the right people around me for that opportunity to happen. And, you know, there were other times, like, I could have met them and stuff like that. But in my head, I didn't, like, I wasn't ready for it because I didn't want to meet him in the mindset I was in or who I was surrounded with or my entourage. I wanted to be, like, something special. And, you know, this year, um, I was on tour in uh, Dallas. Uh, my girlfriend and I, Shantae, we had an event out there. And, um, you know, we... I reached out, I was like, hey, you know what, um, I'll be in town, let me know if you'll be in Ruston, Louisiana, but they were in Alaska, so I knew that, but I still, st I stopped by Ruston, we ate at the teriyaki grill, and I bought some cigars there, and still showed love, because to me, it's not about, it's not about linking up, it's about supporting their businesses. To me, going to the teriyaki grill, and going to their cigar shop, to me, it felt like I was going to Disney World. I feel like I was going to Disneyland, going on a cruise because the nostalgia and supporting their business and businesses. And then um, I told them, "Hey, I'll be in, I'll be in, I'll be stopping through Ruston. I'll be going to Houston. I'll be on tour, going to Houston for this event." And um, scheduling there was like, you know, I gave them a date, but they thought I was going to be in town, but I wasn't going to be in town. It was a week. It was a week of miscommunication, but. You know, they invited me to an event in Ruston. Carl and Kay were there, but I couldn't make it. I, was in, uh, I wasn't in Dallas in Ruston during that time. But I was like, all right, cool. Well, you know, in the future, we're definitely going to link up. But like a month later, a month and a half later, I had no clue it was going to happen. And it wasn't planned. We went to Dallas, Shantae, we went to Houston, Shantae and I, and... You know, we were just excited, you know, but I had the Stockton, Stockton Malone, she had a Stockton Malone, you know, we saw Galveston, we saw downtown Houston, took some pics, enjoyed our time together. And then Kay reached out, I was like, hey, are you in Ruston? I said, no, um, but I'll be there uh, this, this Monday. Said, All right, cool, uh, let's link, you know, um, Carl and I will be in town. So I was like, oh, shit, like, I was, I was like, damn, I'm going to meet the Malones, man. It was like, to me, like being like Barack and Michelle, <laughs> you know, that's just what it felt like to me. And patience is a virtue and, and showing support and being patient. That's what led to me meeting them. But me meeting them with my partner, my tag team, my partner in crime, Shantae. So... She told me I gotta be doing these events. I gotta be getting back in music. I gotta be going back on the road. I gotta be going back on tour. So if I wasn't taking her advice, I don't think I would have been on tour in Houston and on the way back seeing them alone. So that's how that happened. Meeting Carl Malone for the first time in person was, it was a vibe. It was a vibe. I was like, I wasn't nervous. But it didn't feel like it was reality. Like I knew we were in communication, so I, it wasn't like it was just on the fly. It was just one of those things that was like, damn, this is really happening. And it happened in a way that God wanted it to happen. It wasn't planned, it wasn't expected. I was with the love of my life, Shantae, and we did it together. Met Carl, and we spent like six, seven hours together in a cigar um, bar. Uh, I was vibing with him and his friends and his wife, and we were smoking cigars. We were sipping, sipping some, some, uh, some good rum. The vibe, listening to some good tunes, and I realized that Carl Malone and I, Carl, we have the same taste in music. Like, yes, I do rap. I do love rap. But I love blues, I love old school R&B, I love soul, I love some Marvin Gaye, you know, I love some uh, Teddy Pendergrass, you know, I love some Diana Ross, Supremes, all that. And his playlist he had at his cigar bar was all the songs that I liked. So I was like, okay, we got the same taste, you know? And 
the beauty of meeting Carl was the game he put me on. Like, you know, we had some great talks and and a lot of answers, a lot of questions I had, like soul searching questions, life questions that I've been praying about. Uh, I got a lot of answers that day because, you know, Carl, he's an experienced businessman, seasoned, um, and, you know, I'm a businessman and I, I want to elevate my business to get to that point, you know, where my family can prosper from it. All of us can, uh, my wife, my kids, all of us can be a part of it, you know. So to me, it was like, he gave me some good business advice, life advice. And, you know, and um, he also shared me some advice that people shared with him. Like some OGs in the NBA game, like Larry Larry Miller, you know, the longtime owner of the Jazz. Some game he put him on about business and real estate and entrepreneurship. So, to me, I just valued that because I don't have many entrepreneur entrepreneurship friends. Um, the ones I do have, they're like two of my best friends. Oh, shout out to you, Doug. Best believe I see you. And they're self-made. And you know, we're all the same. We're middle school friends. You know, middle school, high school, and beyond but I don't really have much people to talk to about business. I don't have mentors. I don't have OGs that have been through it. So to me, that opportunity talking to Carl was priceless because, you know, he's, you know, person of color, businessman from a small town who made it. Um, and he played his, his time in the league, but he's still relevant. He's still having businesses. He's still providing and he's still living his life. Whether it's in Alaska, in Africa, hunting, whatever it is, he's still living his life. And those stories and that connection just, it's priceless. So that right there, Carl K, the Malones, that meet, meeting y'all inspired me, motivated me to the max. Like I am coming back here, coming back home in Charlotte. I'm ready, motivated, like, Ain't no one can tell me shit. Kanye voice, you can't tell me nothing. Meeting them was just amazing, priceless. And they gave me a lot of like, besides the knowledge, the price of knowledge, they hooked me up with some like exclusive um, stuff from their business that I was not even expecting. So I might do an unboxing right now, but you know, um, Carl Malone and his, um, his friend hooked me up with a bunch of Legendary, legendary cigars, man. Um, like, I'm just so thankful. Like Guillermo Leon, uh, you know, a couple of those, a couple of the Carmelone Barrel Age, Dominican Republic, Dominican cigars. Like, it was just blessings. Um, you know, a whole carton of cigars right here. Um, lighter. Just a lot of drip, a lot of swag, and this right here, La Hora, Leon Jimenez, Dominican rum, Dominican rum right here, Carl Malone is going to be launching his own Dominican rum line um, in collaboration with Leon Jimenez by La Hora, Dominican rum, and um, much love to legends, K Malone, Carl, Katie. Much love to y'all for this, giving me this um, rum. It's not out yet. It will, it will be out soon. And when it's out, be sure to order it. Uh, contact your local distributor and ask them to sell this in their store. But it's numbered. It was bottled October 2017. A grade. Number. Only 3,000 of these are made. What are the odds that the one I get? The number says 1132. Carl Malone wore number 11 in the Olympics and in the Lakers. And he wore number 32 in college, in high school, and in the, and for the Utah Jazz. What are the odds? Mine is 1132. Can't make that up. Can't make that up meant to be it was meant to be meeting y'all in that moment 
It was meant to be, it could not be made in any other way. It could not be finessed in any other way. It was how it happened was how it happened. And uh, I'm definitely gonna unbox this for y'all right now. And I tried this rum. Shantae and I tried it. Ooh, it is smooth. You do not need to mix this with anything. Like, ain't nothing against other rums out there, but when you start sipping on some high-end rum, you will taste the difference. It's smooth, and make sure you drink it smoothly because it will get you lit. So sip, sip, sip. Sip it in your sippy cup. So it's smooth, it's good served chilled. Uh, I'm excited. You know, we'll be doing all our vlogs, sipping some of this and smoking some of these. And much love to the Malones, Katie Malone, um, La Hora, Leon Jimenez, legends for the hookup. I appreciate the hospitality and I will have, I'll be lighting a cigar. Cigar I get exclusively at Legends in each one of my vlogs. I'll be sipping this, a little cup of it, in my vlogs as well. Just to show the mailman and the Malones that we rock with y'all. So, let's get it. So, lastly, last question is, what's the OG Malone album about? Man, it's a body of work, I would say. It's like an EP album, about like seven songs. Body of work between 2014 to now some of my favorite songs that I've recorded and songs that fit the theme um, the album will be dropping this December so stay tuned for that it'll be on Spotify iTunes we'll be having a lot of camp we'll be having a campaign for it um, we really want to hopefully have this album chart on Billboard on iTunes so I'm gonna need y'all to you know buy the album pre-save it pre-order it when the links out because this movement's about y'all, it's about all of this, OG Malone, it's about, um, a lot about my my time living in, living in Utah, uh, living in Idaho, living in Montana, uh, living in Charlotte, Atlanta, Florida, just everything, you know, compiled in seven songs. And expect visuals to drop each month um, outside of these vlogs and music videos, um, questions, all these things and experience. Um, we'll be announcing a spring tour later this year. Um, but it's, it's a body of work, it's a collection, and it's me going really hard in the paint, um, promoting this project to the world as an independent artist. So blood, sweat, and tears are entering all my fans that I met, my supporters throughout the past six, seven years who've been rocking with the campaign. Uh, in the past five years in Utah, I appreciate everything y'all do because, you know, this movement, this whole drip, this whole swag, this whole wave, this music's for y'all. And we'll be having some giveaways, it'll be a lot of fashion, a lot of concepts. So all the videos have a concept with them. You know, they'll be conceptualized in a way that I want it to be. Um, I want it how I want it to be seen, how I want it to be curated. We're doing a lot of traveling, filming these videos uh, throughout the nation, getting the right content for y'all, making it authentic, personal, and individual to me, but all those concepts for y'all to enjoy. So we love you. I love y'all, man. I rock with y'all, everything y'all do. But it's gonna be fun. OG Malone, album dropping in December that mailman, that go-getter. So much love to all y'all for the support. And uh, let's have a good time, let's have a good year. Stay tuned to this channel, subscribe to this channel. Be sure you hit that subscribe button because we'll be having a lot of content for y'all about OG Malone, about the project. And the concept for the album is gonna show a lot of my, um, my thrifting, my vintage hustle, my vintage grind, um, behind the scenes, questions from during the whole process of this album, like the tours I went on, moments from it, questions, vlogs, all this stuff, tutorials for y'all, tips on how to thrift, how to create this, how to create that. Um, 
tips on traveling, tips on relationships, tips on so much stuff. You know, I'm making this channel about me and I'm making it for y'all. I know a lot of y'all want me to, y'all miss me in front of a camera, y'all miss me talking, y'all miss me vlogging, and all this stuff, and now I'm ready. <laughs> I got the content, I got the camera, I got the, I got the lady that supports me, so. So I'm ready. So lastly, be that mailman, be that go-getter, be that flex hard, be that hall of famer, be that underdog, and be that game changer. OG Malone, let's get it. Till next time.